All right, with DC Legends coming to an end, um, I wanted to go through and take a record of all of the characters that have been released in the game over time, as there have been quite a few, um, in addition to the decent-sized roster that the game started with about six and a half years ago. They've added, on average, two characters every month, plus at least usually one skin, so it just makes a lot of characters and a lot of options total. And before this game is no longer, I wanted to be able to capture all of that. So, today, in that pursuit, we are on Energy Affinity, uh, Earthling, Male Villains now. We completed the heroes in the last video, now we're on the villains. Um, in the interest of trying to control the overall length of this, I'm only going to do the ones that I have rebirth. Rebirthed. So there's only five of them here. Um, we'll do these other ones here in a separate video. I think there's what, eight or so, nine, five, yeah, there's nine here. So five here, nine there. So let's just get into it. First up is Captain Cold, criminal master of chill. He's got a few skins, let's see. Wow, it's way different like this. I think that's his basic look. That was his legendary look. And then this was a skin. Give him a beard, making him look much different and cooler. His moves, he had cold shot, slip and slide. Winter is here, sweeping blasts, and loyalty among rogues. You know something I noticed? All of his moves have the same name for the legendary name as well. Usually the legendary name has something different, but this says cold shot, and it's called cold shot over here too. Hmm, that's different. Anyways, next is Cyborg Superman, Man Machine of Steel. Let's see, so this must have been the regular look, you know, very Superman-y looking. And then this one is more like the Red Sun <laughs> version of Superman. Um, moves, we have Techno Organic Arsenal, Disintegrating Glare, Annihilation Protocol, the Man of Tomorrow, which is a halfway decent de uh, animated film. I was going to say DC. Duh, it's DC. And Treacherous Manipulator. Next. Did we already have him actually on the hero side? We might have had him on hero because I was confused about this. And his skins were already unlocked. So we very well, we might have already looked at him, but I forgot. So I guess we're looking at him again. Next, we have Lex Luthor's Survival Support Suit. He's got a bunch of skins. Um... There's the... Whoa, where the heck did this one come from? What is this? I don't remember buying this or anything. What is this? Wow, this is my first time seeing this. He's got like... Um, oh, what do they call it? I'm drawing a blank now. The, 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 the stuff from um, Iron Man 3 that makes the people be able to have those powers so then pepper gets some but then that's like the only time they ever talk about it so apparently she lost it what is it called I, I feel like it's like infernape or something but that's a pokemon i don't know oh um, dang i feel like i almost had it again i don't know but you probably know what i'm talking about if you like dc i'm sure you're aware of the marvel movies and then he's got like a black suit um bottoms black suit like from a lantern core and then he's just like what the heck? This is weird. I didn't know I had this skin. Anyway. <laughs> this was the regular version of Lex. Then his legendary. The Extremist. That's what it was called. Anyways, legendary. This suit, which is a straight up suit. I used this one for a very long time because for the longest time, Lex was my leader. Um, and I preferred this outfit the best. It was cool. It's just nice and concise, just a regular suit. He is supposed to be a business guy, so. Then I got this suit and thought this was kind of cool. Because, you know, Lex is all about trying to take down Superman stuff. So making his own version of an armored Superman style suit kind of made sense. But now there's this. This doesn't even look like Lex. What is this? I'm sticking with this one. He actually looks like some kind of like super villain thing. <laughs> All right, next is Kimo. 
the Deathless Doom. All right, skin change. That is a skin. This is the regular skin, kind of bl bland looking. This was his legendary skin. I forgot about this. I haven't looked at this in a while. And then this was a skin. This is way cooler. Wait a minute, he loses his mouth though. Yeah, but it still looks cool. He looks a little taller too. Anyway, it's his moves. Chemtrail, Toxic Spill, Fallout, Corrosive Anatomy, and Sticky Composition. You know I just thought of? Did I go over his moves? No, I didn't. I got distracted by his skins. <laughs> so he has Hands-Free Security, LexCore Nanomeds, Metahuman Deterrent, and LexCore Repair Bot. And Metal, Metal Human Deterrent had two legendary upgrades. It looks like one might have been um, apply silence to an enemy, and then the second one must have been call and assist. All right. Chemo. And then next we have Savitar, which, I guess, spoiler alert, <laughs> Savitar is um, sort of in the Flash movie, but he's much different looking than this. He's just Barry, who just keeps going back in time and getting himself worse and worse. Where this guy actually looks like some different guy. You know, he's 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 got a mustache and he's tall and he's got this blue hair and doesn't really look like he's Barry. Anyways, the Speed Force cultist. What are your skins, boy? Oh wow, he was shirtless before. Oh, he looks pretty ripped. But this way, he's all armored. Anyways, his moves. Kinetic Transference, Null Inertia, Delayed Effect, Deacceleration, and Direction. Also call Kinetic Transference. Okay. And this might be it, right? Yes, it was. So let's go back to the beginning and then read their bios. So, Captain Cold. Bio number one. Affiliations Rogues Gallery. Powers. With his trademark cold gun, he freezes opponents to remove their advantages, slow and stun them. A criminal mastermind and icy customer, Leonard Snart counters the Flash's super speed with the freezing cold technology. Growing up in an abusive home, the only warm spot in Leonard Snart's heart was for his sister. Embarking on a criminal career, Snart ran afoul of the Flash, but conceived of a plan to counter the hero's incredible speed. Stealing specialized freezing technology, Snart has run afoul of the Flash on numerous occasions. Though a hardened criminal, Snart leads the rogues and enforces a, enforces a strict code that forbids unnecessary violence and killing. Aww. <laughs> He's a good bad guy. Cyborg Man of Steel. Let's see what your story's about. Do I remember this? Spider-Man Revenge Squad and Kryptonian. No, nope, don't remember either of those. With powerful immunities and always increasing shields, he shrugs off critical hits to attack with debilitating strikes. A product of Kryptonian technology, after a tragic accident, astronaut Hank Henshaw seeks revenge against Superman. During a space mission, astronaut Hank Henshaw and his wife were killed in an accident, but Henshaw survived as a disembodied consciousness. What does that mean? Was he just a head that was still alive? How, how are you a consciousness, but then at the same time, somebody? That's weird. It doesn't make any sense. Like, that can't be. <laughs> Anyways, managing to interface with the Kryptonian birthing matrix that carried Superman to Earth, Henshaw used it to give himself a body with Superman's DNA and resurrect himself as a man-machine hybrid. Blaming Superman for the death of his wife, Henshaw now obsessively seeks revenge against the Man of Steel. Next, goofy looking Lex. Affiliations in Justice League, Secret Society of Supervillains. Powers, genius inventor with armored survival suit of his own creation. Genius businessman, inventor, and scientist, Lex Luthor sees himself as humanity's true savior even if he has to threaten society to save it. The only thing that exceeds Lex Luthor's genius is his arrogance and uncompromising hatred for Superman. Viewing him as an alien menace that threatens Earth, not to mention being an affront to mere humans such as himself, Lex directs his unrivaled scientific intellect and vast financial resources towards thwarting Superman. 
Lex Luthor could have been one of Earth's greatest champions if not for his single-minded envy and the supreme arrogance. And now look at him, he has some extremists. <laughs> Chemo. Affiliations. Secret Society of Supervillains. Powers. Able to spew highly corrosive and toxic chemical attacks. Discarded chemicals and protective technology unwittingly created this sentient vat of toxic waste. Working to cure the world's ills, Professor Ramsey Norton would discard his failed chemical experiments in a disposal container in his lab. But Norton's failures resulted in one startling success, the creation of the life form known as Chemo. Whatever was in that container that brought the toxic sludge to life, the being that emerged has a rudimentary intelligence and aggressive nature that makes it a noxious menace. <laughs> I always think about how everything, everything that they always try to create that's like alien is always like us, you know, two legs, two arms, a head. Like, even the image that they give of what aliens look like, it's humanoid shape like this. This is supposed to be a whole blob of discarded waste that came to life, and yet it's going to kind of resemble us, a head, a torso, legs, arms. Why not have a ridiculous amount of legs, or have, like, a grimer bottom, you know, grimer and muck bottom, but then have, like, tentacles for arms and, like, a weird head that's super disproportionate you know, in accordance with our human standards, like, it's always the same. Just because we look like this doesn't mean other life forms would too. Even in Star Wars, Star Wars tries to be more imaginative, at least the old ones, I'm thinking the, of the actual George Lucas movies, not the Disney ones. But like, it's always just humanoid. Like the guy that, uh, in the cantina that's trying to start trouble with Luke and then Obi-Wan has to like come save him. You know, that guy, yeah, he might have, like, a piggish face, but he's still humanoid. Like, why aren't things weird, you know? Everything wouldn't just be humanoid. I don't know. Anyways. Savitar. The Speed Force cultist. Your story is Speedster. Savitar focuses on stealing speed from his challengers and weakening their defenses against his powerful critical strikes. Savitar gained his powers during an airplane accident and has dedicated his life to the Speed Force ever since, using his abilities against those who challenge his beliefs. Savitar was a pilot during the Cold War until his plane was struck by lightning. This incident left him with superhuman speed and the ability to steal kinetic energy from his environment. It also left him with such a strong faith for the Speed Force that he decided to become Savitar in honor of the Hindu god of movement. And I think that is it. Yep. That is all. We were just looking at the rebirth one, so that was those five, and I'll have, what, nine more in the next one? But it makes for a much shorter, more condensed, concise, and easy video than doing 14 in one, so yeah. Anyways, that's all I got for now, so uh, thanks for checking us out. Until next time, I said see ya.